<laughs> yes. Yeah. You gotta be so. from singing, don't you? Yeah. Okay. I'm starting with the poem that I sent you. It's called I Am. <laughs> this poem, I Am, it came through in November of 2019. And then it kept expanding. So this is I Am. I am a medic in the war on the poor, stationed in a free fire zone. Every day they take things away, many terrified, hungry, and alone. Laughter truly is good medicine when horror and heartache are real. In the midst of pain, of loss and gain, hope, love, and kindness can heal. I am a peaceful rainbow warrior. I am a wounded healer. I am a fat old ruddy white dyke driving a six-wheeled power wheelchair flying a rainbow flag. I am a disability diversity rights artist, activist. I am a singer, songwriter, poet, performer, grassroots community organizer, arrested many times for nonviolent civil disobedience, Supporting freedom and peace with <clears throat> justice. You can bring a chair over. Still believing that the bravest souls are kind and love never dies. And then, along with a whole bunch of stuff that's been coming through because of the pandemic, it's been a, a time of real inspiration for me and I think for a lot of other creative people. And maybe for you too, it's a time that we can all evolve and grow. So this new verse along these lines arrived between April 20th through 25th. I am Joanna Appleseed, scattering my songs and poems, stories and outrageous humor, handing out Endless papers poured out from my soul with name, snail mail, email, and home phone number. Sometimes selling, more often giving away rainbow peace signs. Plastic rainbow peace sign necklaces. Nowadays, taking proper precautions, I display the necklaces hanging from my gloved hand from a respectful distance. Displaying my offering, descri describing the necklace through my mask, asking the attending parental unit if I could give one for free to one or more children. A necklace still wrapped in plastic. Making the same offer to adults. Well, at least those who broadcast receptiveness. Steering clear of those who seem paranoid about my obvious age disabilities and oddities. Clearly concerned that I might be contagious. Maddening that so many foster that attitude, pandemic or not. As long as I'm rolling, I try to stay happy always searching, scanning every scene, 
ready, willing, and still disabled. Hoping to connect with kindred spirits, identifying strangers who might be friends if we take time and trust to know who we are, if we are brave enough to care and share. Come out, come out, whoever you are, wherever you, wherever you are, as you are. Oddballs of the world unite. We have nothing to lose but our loneliness. You don't have to be weird to be a friend of mine, but it helps. Oh dear, how queer. Tee -hee. This next one was written when I was attending, it was a wonderful event, the National Women's Studies Association, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. This was November 2013. This woke me up at 2.30 a.m. This is what happens with me. A lot of times creative things like come to me at night or when I'm half asleep. We like intersectionality and multi-dimensional reality. Now, some of us are queer. You gotta like us or you wouldn't be here. We are intergenerational and multi-gendered relational. You don't have to be weird to fit in here, but honey, it sure does tell. So I repeated that phrase again. But this one is just simple, but it's how I feel. I am me. You are you. Together we are we. Every color of the rainbow, together we are free. All along the spectrum, we know we all belong in our cycles and our circles. Together we are strong. Okay, now we're moving into music. And the first first song. Ah, well, briefly. Patty. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come over here. Briefly, um people wonder what my disabilities are. Well, I have a bunch of them. But um, my physical disability, I acquired on September 30th, 1977. And a stranger came up and uh, assaulted me and stabbed me in the back. I have a spinal cord injury. And as a result of that, I needed accessible housing and transportation in order to attend Georgia State University because they didn't have uh, uh, any places for students to stay. They had no housing. It was an urban university. So I needed accessible housing and transportation. So in order to get it, I had to allow myself to be institutionalized. I had to move into a place called the Vocational Rehabilitation Spinal Cord Residence located on the grounds of the Georgia Mental Health Institute. Yep, I got to live at Unit 6 on the grounds of a mental hospital. Didn't have a key to my room. There was no lock on the inside of the door. I was 28 years old and I had a curfew. Well, it was quite an adjustment. But one day, well, it was probably in the evening, 
I come back from a long day at Georgia State University in my manual chair, as I was back then. I was gradually beginning to walk again, but it was taking time. And I had my first set of college exams. And I had studied and studied and studied and studied. And I was like stressed to the max. So I'm in the van on the way back. I didn't trust the van driver, so I wasn't gonna show him I was freaking out. So I'm saying to myself, okay, Elaine, calm down. I talk to myself a lot. So I'm saying to myself, okay, Elaine, calm down. You probably did okay on the test. And I said to myself, yeah, I'm doing all right for a cripple. Then I said to myself, I'm not making any noise, by the way. I said to myself, wow, what an awful thing to say to yourself. I was already a songwriter. So I said, well, I bet you I'm not the only cripple that's ever thought this way. Hmm. Maybe a crip can be hip. Hmm, that's a good idea. A crip can be hip. Wow, a crip can be hip. Yeah. Woohoo. Oh, yeah. Well. So, mind you, I haven't made any sound. All of this is just going on inside me. But I'm getting more and more excited because I started getting the beat. I'm doing all right for a cripple. Yeah, that's good. It's kind of jazzy. I'm doing all right for a cripple. A wise cracking ward of the state. Yes, I got a song. It's a good song. And so this song was written while I was living in an institution and had this vision that a crip can be hip. <clears throat> well, uh, I used to could jump like a rabbit and walk along for miles at a time. I never really knew how lucky I was to be able to run and climb. But now I'm lucky more like a turtle to slow and steady that's me but we'll get along if you just sing my song and pretend for a minute you're me because i'm doing all right for a cripple just a wise crack and ward of the state at times it gets rough but i'm pretty tough and i've adjusted quite well to my fate so Go give me your grief for your pity. Just kind of get out of my way. Yes, it's been a trip, but a crib can be hip. And I'm enjoying myself today. When I used to see handicapped people, I felt awkward and funny inside. I found myself feeling sorry for them. And like it's not. My tongue got tied, but I got a new view from a wheelchair. And now they're all staring at me. What a lesson I learned when the tables were turned. But I'm glad I finally see, yes, I'm doing all right for a cripple. And I'm a taxpaying citizen, too. Ha! At times it gets rough, but I'm pretty tough. And somehow I keep making it through. So don't give me your grief for your pity. Just kindly get out of my way. Woo. Well, it's been a trip, but a crip can be hip. And I'm enjoying myself today. And so the next time you see a cripple, don't get all teary and frown. But just because a person can't get up, is no reason to put them down. Some of us hobble on crutches. Some can't hear or see. 
Well, maybe you'll find you're the one who was blind, understanding, can set us all free. So consider me just inconvenienced, unique, yet a lot like you, with burdens to bear, good things to share, lots of things I can still do. So go give me those off the wall comments. Just kindly get out of my way. Move. Well, it's been a trip, but a grip can be hip, and I'm enjoying myself today. Oh, yes, I'm doing all right for a cripple. I made it halfway around the world. Yet even today, I hear some people say that I'm doing all right for a girl. Ha! Don't give me those off-the-wall comments. Just kind of get out of my way. Move! Well, it's been a trip, but a crip can be hip, and I'm enjoying myself today. I hope you're enjoying yourself today, because I am enjoying myself today. Ba -dum -bum. Yeah! How you doing, Judy? I'm hanging in there, girl. I'm hanging in there, too. I'm going to take a sip of something. Woo-hoo! Well, <clears throat> so now before I moved to the Vocational Rehabilitation Spinal Cord Residence, <clears throat> When I got out of the hospital after two months, I had to go back to live at a place where I was just beginning to walk a little bit with two of the forearm crutches and a short leg brace and very unsteady. And I had to go back and live at a place where there were 22 stairs. Woo! 22 stairs. Well, the stairs that were attached to the house were one thing because they were wrought iron. So at least they were regular and there were railings on both sides. So had something to hold on to. <clears throat> but then there was a walkway and the second set of 11 stairs down to the street level, the sidewalk. Well, that was uneven concrete with no railing. So I had to do those stairs on my butt. So I would very carefully sit down and then go down the stairs. And then when I came back, I would do the reverse and go up the stairs and very carefully stand back up and try not to fall. So anyway, this was... <clears throat> And back then, there was almost nothing for people with disabilities with mobility limitations. There was no access to hardly anything. And one of my favorite things, not, <laughs> was how to get to the hospital because of course I had to go back for a lot of things and physical therapy and whatever. And the only transportation they provided was <laughs> an old panel truck. It, 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 you know, the old fashioned panel trucks and stuff. And they had two very burly guys that could carry you, lift you up and put you in the truck. And then when you're in the truck, in your manual wheelchair, they would tilt you up against the side of, of the panel truck and put straps around your chair. And that's the way you would ride. Well, anyway, this was my situation. And I started saying, well, you know, I'm already a songwriter, because I was. I said, well, I guess that's what I need to do, is to try to write some songs about what we go through as people with disabilities. And the song that came 
is still one of the songs that means a whole lot to me personally. And it's a sing-along song. So I'm going to get my guitar, and then I'm going to teach you the words, and we're going to do a sing-along, okay? Just let me get my guitar. No, 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 just get out of the way, please. Okay. No, just, just let me get my guitar, please. <laughs> if you want to do something to hold that while I'm performing, if that tells people the words. <laughs> We're a little crowded. That's okay. It's called cozy, right? Oh, yes. Okay, now one of the reasons I really love this song is because little children can learn the chorus very easily. Now, adults have a harder time because adults uh, have more self-conscious concerns. So let's try it. Is everybody ready? You have to have your, your um, Jessica. Could you turn your um, mic off? My key is not here, so she, I can't. I'm sorry. Okay, well, you, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, she just. Okay. okay well, then uh, we'll just do it. So this is this is the way it goes. I'm going to say, "Let's get together and work it out." You say. Let's get together and work it out. You never know until you try. You never know until you try. Let's get together and work it out. You say, let's get together and work it out. Could you move your guitar? What? Can you move your guitar case? What? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you move your guitar case? It's covering up the the core, the sign, the words. Oh, okay. Too high. Uh, well, the guitar case is right in front of it. Okay. Well, just that's perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. There's the words. Uh, I'm you sorry. Wanna, that's okay. We're in this together, see? But now if I'm gonna be in the picture at all, then you can't see the words. So yeah, there you that's go. Cool. That's part of the problem, all right? So here we go. We're gonna sing this song. Yeah, I have to have room to play. Are you ready, kids? Come on. Oh, let's get together and work it out. You never know until you try. Let's get together and work it out. We can help each other get by. Tired of being shoved to the back of the shelf, forgotten and ignored. We're tired of just sitting and watching TV, seeing things we could never afford. And we know all around there are millions like us, scattered throughout the land. Through too many years and through too many tears, we've needed each other's hand. What do you think we ought to do about that? Let's get together and work it out. You never know until you try. Let's get together and work it out. We can help each other get by. I see Bradley's doing a real good job there. Hey, Bradley, you my man. Every day, children are born who need some extra help in school. Too many don't get it. They suffer neglect <clears throat> for life, then they are branded a fool. No matter how old or young we are, most of us still can learn. 
And if you've been lucky all of your life, you never know, it may be your turn. Come on, you gotta sing with me this time. Oh, let's get together and work it out. You never know until you try. Let's get together and work it out. We can help each other now. One more time, so let's get together and work it out. You never know until you try. Let's get together and work it out. We can help each other get by. So let's help each other get by. Woo! Well, thank you, everybody that's been singing along. And Bradley is Bradley's the man. He he was good. He's, he's going to bed. <laughs> what? I said he's going to bed. He says good night. <laughs> I know. Well, good night to Bradley. He's a sweetheart. He's beautiful. Well, so. The reference in a crypt can be hip. Um, I made it halfway around the world. That was added. The original song was written in 1978, but it was added when I went to Australia. I went to Australia in 1980 and 81. I was there for a year and three months. And I was there on a Fulbright scholarship as part of the International Year of Disabled Persons. So that's the reference to halfway around the world. So I went to Australia and I traveled all over Australia and I performed and I went to every state in Australia and got to do a lot of stuff. And all of this before I had any connection with uh, the broader disability rights movement here in the United States. I had a little bit of stuff that went on in, in uh, Atlanta at Georgia State University and I met a few people, but not the broader disability rights movement. I didn't have any connection. So I went to Australia and I traveled around and I came back and, well, I call this my wandering in the wilderness period because I didn't really know what I was gonna do. And so I did part-time work at Georgia State U University and I got to connect it up with some disability folks and stuff. And well, the real breakthrough was when I met a guy named Mark Johnson. Mark Johnson, ADAPT was very new back then and Mark, Mark had just gotten a job at Shep Shepherd's Spinal Cord center in Atlanta. That was after I had been through all that stuff. So anyway, so I went to an event and Mark, Mark Johnson, who is quadriplegic, he was there and I showed him my stuff from Australia and he said, oh, Elaine, your songs are wonderful. But w one of the things we're, right now, we're trying to get access to public transportation. We need a song, we will ride. We have been chanting, we will ride, we will ride, we, until we want to throw up. We need a song. So I said, well, okay, you know, I'll try. Um, but songs just come when they come. I, I don't, I'll, I'll think about it and see. Well, once again, now I don't know about the rest of y'all, but if I have to get up, I will set the alarm and I will do what I have to do, but I do not naturally wake up early in the morning. That's just not my way. This song literally woke me up. It woke me up on March 27th, 1987. I was living in Atlanta at the time. At that stage, I was walking more than I can at this point, so I had 
managed to walk enough so that I could climb up and down on the inaccessible buses, but I was very aware that a lot of my friends had no access at all. And so public transportation was a pretty big deal to me. And this song woke me up at 6.30 a.m. I got a cup of coffee, sat in my favorite chair, got my notebook and sat there. And it came third verse, second verse, first verse. First, the, the chorus came first. Mm -hmm. and then it was third verse, second verse, first verse. And then I switched it around, got my guitar, found the tune. And this song, We Will Ride, was the anthem of when ADAPT used to be called American Disabled for Accessible Public Transportation. We went all over the place singing this song and also interrupting the American Public Transit Association conventions, wherever they were. And we sang this song over and over. We sang this song while we were being arrested. We sang this song while we were in, in, under arrest. And it's because of this song and how important it was to our movement and getting the Americans with Disabilities Act passed that when people were planning the 30th anniversary stuff, they said, does anybody know where that Elaine Kolb is? Is she still alive? Does anybody know where she is anymore? And so people looked me up and found me and Susan found me and others found me and this is the song, We Will Ride. Now, there's a lot of words, but you have to at least be able to sing, we will ride, okay? So we will ride, we will ride with the strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love. And we will ride, we will ride. And I would like to dedicate this song right now to the memory of so many of our people, but one that is resonating so deeply with me right now is John Lewis, because his battle cry was always love. Such a special effort to support people with disabilities on multiple levels. Um, he showed up many times when we had demonstrations at the Capitol, and he was just such an inspiration. So whoever you want to think about, but when you think about our battle cry is love, remember John Lewis. Well, okay, you want to, would you close that for me? Para 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 Okay, I'm gonna sing We Will Ride a couple times. You better sing with me or I'll just keep singing We Will Ride until I'm satisfied. Are you ready? We will ride, we will ride with the strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, we will ride. Once more. We will ride, we will ride, with strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, we will ride. Far too many people have been suffering too long. We won't accept excuses, right is right and wrong is wrong. And it's wrong to try to keep us waiting for us charity. So let's get ourselves together here and now, you and me. And if we do that, if we get together and really push, and really make it happen, you know what's gonna happen? And it did, we did it. And now we can do it. 
And we will ride, we will ride, with the strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, we will ride. By the thousands and the millions, we raise our voice to say that it's time to practice what we preach and live it day by day. <clears throat> We know that every kind of people share the power to be free. We will live and learn and work and move and love and vote. Everybody's going to vote, right? Everybody's going to vote with dignity. And we will ride, we will ride with strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, oh, we will ride, oh, we will ride, we will ride, with strength of truth and justice on our side. By the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, one more time, we will ride, we will ride. With strength of truth and justice on our side, by the grace of God above, our battle cry is love, and we will ride, we will ride. And now we can get on all the buses, we can get on the trains, we're getting a little better on the planes, it's still kind of messed up when we go on the planes, but we ride, we did it, we ride. Okay, I'm going to take a break. We're going to shut down at this end, and uh, Susan's going to kind of do a little do-da while we're taking a break here, and then we'll be back with Not Dead Yet. So, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay, so... Elaine mentioned ADAPT a few times, and my guess is some of you aren't that familiar with ADAPT, or most of the actions that she's talking about precede you guys, but we do have some early adapters with us. So if they want to chime in, they are welcome to chime in. So the first thing that ADAPT was organized to confront is busing. Uh, the buses were not able to be used by people who wore, used chairs or people who use crutches or had difficulty navigating steps. And so what ADAPT did is that they chained themselves to the buses, they put wheelchairs in front of the buses and they would not let the buses roll. And they did that day after day. We have one of those activists here, correct? You wanna talk about what it was like? You can unmute yourself. Oh, I'll unmute you. Let's see. Uh, oh, you've got to unmute yourself. I can't unmute you. Sorry about that. There you go. So tell us about the early ADAPT. So I wasn't there in the early days, although I knew about ADAPT in the early days. I, I am with ADAPT Texas now. And, you know, we, we've done a lot of stuff around transportation. And sometimes we still have to park buses. <laughs> so. So one of the things ADAPT stands for is civil disobedience. They don't necessarily break laws. I can't say they always don't break laws, but they're not, the, the aim is not to break laws, but it is to go right to the edge of what is lawful and unlawful. Uh, and it, the term is civil disobedience. Um, and it's, uh, John Lewis talks about civil disobedience too, only he calls it doing, um, What's the phrase that he uses? Um, well, I'm blanking. Um, doing bad, doing good, bad, good, bad things. Doing good trouble. Good, that's it. Yes, good trouble. Yes, 
Yes, and that's sort of what ADAPT is about, is good trouble. Uh, so there's a, so the actions really began in the 70s and they continue today. Uh, new chapters are still starting, uh, new places that haven't had ADAPT before. Um, Quentin, you're an early adapter too. You want to talk about ADAPT at all? Uh, there you go. Everyone. My name is Quentin Williams. I'm glad to see all of you here. And uh, to answer Susan's question, yes, I am an early adapter. Uh, and uh, we fought and marched uh, in many places in the urban uh, city of Detroit. I'm from the born and raised in um, Detroit, Michigan. And uh, what um, Susan was just talking about, or uh, I, will, I can't pronounce your names, um, man, uh, but um, we blocked buses. We marched in front of um, the, the streets where there were no cut curbs then. And we were asking for uh, not only our civil rights, but our human rights as a person first. Because they, as you know, the icon it, um, says people with disabilities. So that means, you know, we were saying, you know, we are described as a person first. Our disabilities does not define who we are. Um, and as that grew on and grew on, you know, we were able to uh, get, other, get other leaders uh, throughout the country to uh, be a part and uh, support us. And finally, then uh, in 1990, when George Bush was president, he, the, the senior George Bush was president, he signed in the law, the uh, ADA. But it was a struggle. And what that did also, for those who denied us uh, the transparency or the right to be who we are as a person, uh, we, um, to like some pastors, they didn't want to come on, or, or city leaders, we went to their homes, we found out who they were, and we went to their homes, we marched in front of their homes, and people got tired of it, and they, they wondered what it really was that all these people with different types of disabilities, people who are manual wheelchair users, electric wheelchair users, uh, blind, deaf individuals who have disabilities, and as well as some able-bodied, um, individuals. So that uh, basically was the forefront of uh, getting the ADA signed to law. Anybody else here from ADAPT? Well, my son who keeps wandering in and out of here, he was an early adapter. He uh, started to, to adapt actions when he was 16. Um, the very first one he did in the city of Detroit, um, it was adapt and not dead yet. It was against uh, Jack Kevorkian. And uh, he wore a not dead yet t-shirt in the rain. And it's, uh, one, of the, it's one of those semi-famous photographs that gets put in lots of, uh, lots of different things when they're sort of remembering what the importance is of, of the ADA throughout time. Jason, have you ever been involved in an, an ADAPT action? Um, I almost did back in 2007. I was going to be involved in ADAPT action DC, but um, I had a fight with my mom and dad about it. They didn't want me to go. Oh, well, <laughs> that happens. Yeah, and I was going to take off from my job at the time, and I don't know. It's okay. and I really wanted to go. 
I think it was a fun run, actually, a, a that fun run. Yes. Well, that's one of the things that they do every year. They call it a fun run. It's their way of uh, making money to mm -hmm. pay for. Uh, because one, one of the things that many people do, civil disobedience does not mean that you don't get arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it usually means you don't spend any time in jail, but you do get arrested and you do have to pay bail so that you can yeah. go home. And so that's one of the reasons why we have have fundraisers to help mm -hmm. pay for all of that. Yeah. Oh, somebody is dinging me here. They're trying to get in and they can't get in. Uh, this keeps happening and I don't understand why because I keep checking and all, all, everything's correct. Everything matches what it's supposed to be. And yet it doesn't work for people. And I really don't, I don't understand what's happening. Well, things happen. Yeah, but you know, I wish it wouldn't keep happening. I know. Well, what I've done when it happened and it's happened to me several times was I just go to the regular Zoom and if you have the, uh, um, the, the password and the, um, what do you call it? The code. Code, yeah. It, and you just punch it in yourself and it's more likely to work. Every time I've done it that way, it has worked. It's sometimes taken me a while to find where the numbers are and make sure I copy them down correctly. And then I, you know, the oops factor is like such a big thing. Oops, <laughs> messed up again. Oh, well. That's well, how I got on today. I just plugged in the numbers myself. <laughs> well. I just want to say thank you to everybody that has showed up and thank you for speaking up, those of you who have, because quiet as it's, it's kept, I get tired. <laughs> well, we've got somebody who's got two people that I've just sent the, the text, the information to. So there's more okay. people coming. Well, you know, this is, this is the way it is. So. While we're still talking away, I wanted to share a few things because I, thus far, I've been arrested with ADAPT and not dead yet um, around 25 times. Um, and then I've been arrested a few other places with a few other things, like I was arrested on May 14th, 2018 in Washington, D.C. with the Poor People's Campaign. So the new Poor People's Campaign is something that I encourage everybody to connect up with because they're one of the most inclusive groups. I, I, I don't know, it's frustrating a lot of times to, to be involved with non-disabled groups because they don't get it and they don't know what to do. And so, like I go to demonstrations uh, sometimes, but I, I have to be conscious of the fact that they're not conscious of the fact that I can't go over a curb. No way, ain't gonna happen. And uh, what has happened in the past is that, you know, I've been in demonstrations with mostly non-disabled people and like all of a sudden something happens and the crowd surges to go over the curb and I can't. So I've been almost knocked over several times that way. So I've learned that I have to create kind of a, a support group around myself if I'm in a, a group of where most of the people are, are, are not disabled. And so I'm kind of outgoing. So I just recruit people and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to need a little help. Would you like to volunteer? Would you be willing to help? And uh, sometimes they do. And uh, then you got another friend. Another thing about getting arrested, there was one time when I didn't just go to jail that I actually went to prison. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, we went, 
to uh, uh, Montreal in Canada. It was back uh, before the ADA was passed, and this was um, the American Public Transit Association had their convention in Montreal. Well, the interesting thing there was that that's a different legal system. And so, anyway, so they uh, really didn't like us very much. And so, oh, hi, John. Yeah, John Kelly just popped in. Yay. Hey, Elaine. Hi, John. I was just talking about when we were in, in Montreal in Canada and got arrested there. That was because some of us went to prison there. I went to the women's prison, Maison Tongay. Wow. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's another whole story. But yeah, so um, it, it's not... Um, it's not a joke, you know, it's a very serious thing when you put yourself in a situation to get arrested because once you're under arrest, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so we try to make sure we have lots of legal people involved. And that's, but, what you know, Elaine, people should also know, I've been to lots of ADAPT actions and I've never been arrested. And that's my choice not to be arrested because I always go with my son and we can't really be separated because he wouldn't understand what was happening. And I, he is too vulnerable to be on his own. And Absolutely. so one of the things that ADAPT does is when arrest is imminent, they always let people know that, you know, if you, if you don't want to be arrested, leave now. And in general, the police are very supportive. And they let you know also that if you don't want to be arrested, go, you know, go, go to the other side of the street, go a block down. Uh, so being, being arrested is, is, you don't have to be arrested to be a part of it and adapt action. Oh, no. In fact, the people that don't get arrested are very important because they do things on the outside and uh, continue and demonstrate and go to where the people are that have been arrested and then try to make sure that everybody is okay, that nobody gets lost in the shuffle. And Bring uh, food. Yeah. So w the thing is that there's, and also there's some people that, you know, it's just, it would be dangerous for them because of, of, you know, physical or mental or emotional issues that they have, that it's just not a safe thing to do because it, it is very stressful. So there's no shame or embarrassment. It's not a problem if you don't do it, you know, and uh, okay, Jessica's waving her hand. Hold on, Jessica, I will mute, I will unmute you. Well, I think I will unmute you. I'm trying. Uh, I don't believe we have the ability to unmute. Um, I'm so, clicking on it, but it's just not working. Yeah, we can give, we can like send them a message and then they have to finish it by clicking unmute. But, um, so. See, I'll try it. It seems there's a different way to do it. Da, 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 da. No. Looks like she's got some. Here, unmute, there. unmute audio. Yeah, that that's that's what uh, Nick was right. Then we would text them a message and let them know that they need to unmute themselves. Someone would. Say, yeah. No. Her her issue. She can't physically do it. Okay. Not that she doesn't want to. Is that she can't. Look, there's no one there with her then. They're not right there in the room with her at the moment. You. Hello. Am I good now? Yep. Yes, we can hear you now. Hey. Okay. Thank you. My assistant helped a lot. So um, that's really good for me to know because in Chicago, Illinois, the adapt is very, very, very strong. 
and I always wanted to go, but I was fear of uh, getting arrested. And I'm all for advocacy work. I used to do that a lot in my personal work. And um, I thought that you would automatically get arrested. So I, so I'm happy to hear that because I, plus I don't want that not to be mean, but I don't want that on my record. Like that's being a criminal, and I don't want that. I'm sorry if I offended other people, but I personally just don't like the idea of getting arrested. Like. I'm supportive of other people getting arrested, but I personally don't want to get arrested. Oh, and that's your right. It's absolutely your right. I've never been arrested either, Jessica, and I've been in a DAP for, oh, I don't know. Let's see. At least 20 years, 21, 22 years, and wow. never been arrested. So. so the police will tell you when it's time for you to go? Yeah. Like they, they can predict that. Yes, they, they don't want to arrest people. So they will come around and they'll give you warnings. And then you can sort of think, okay, that was a warning. I don't really have to leave yet. But when you really have to leave, they'll make it clear that you really have to go now or I'm going to arrest you. Yeah, usually they give three warnings. And then even with that, when they come around to actually do the arrest, this is if, if things are calm. You know, this is, this is a calm situation, not an intense situation. So they come around and they'll say, you've made your point. You really don't want to get arrested, do you? And I said, oh, I came all the way from Connecticut to get arrested. I'm here. Arrest me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, maybe some of you were on the other day, or if you weren't, you can uh, look it up because it's going to be uh, recorded and online somehow. I know it, it's being set up anyway, but not dead yet. Um, the, the three main people, Diane Coleman, uh, Anita Cameron, and John Kelly, who's with us today. Yay, John. Thank you, Elaine. Such kind Thank words. You. Yeah, um, we've been together now a, a lot of places over the years, including in Chicago. There was a big Not Dead Yet event in Chicago. <clears throat> and, um, but it all started out in back in uh, 1996. And what I understand, now Diane Coleman says that um, the name, uh, not dead yet, it comes from uh, Monty Python. That's right, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yes. Now, that, I'll explain that one, because okay. you, you, you got to see, you've got to be able to picture the whole story. So, okay. it's the Middle Ages. People are dying everywhere. There's, there's no room anymore. And so people are being carted off in carts. And so you have these people going through the street, picking people up off the street and throwing them on the carts. And so this guy goes by, he's got a cart full of bodies. He throws another body on the cart and starts to move. And the guy raises up and he starts screaming, not dead yet, I'm not dead yet. And that's where it comes from. And then the, the, the guy that goes to pick him up is saying, well, of course you are. And the guy says, oh, no, I was actually feeling pretty good today. <laughs> so anyway, that was the inspiration. I think Bob Kafka came up with the, uh, the name. and But Diane Coleman started the organization, and we also... Well, we've done a lot of things over the years, but now with this one, the thing to remember is just the phrase, not dead yet. But it goes like this. We are not dead yet. We can boogie with the best of them. 
We are not dead yet. We can laugh and have some fun. Because we're not dead yet. We're fighting for our freedom. And we'll never die because our spirit will live on. That's the thing, you know. Some of us believe that we're spirit. And we come here and we have a human experience. And then when we're done, we go back to spirit. So I believe spirit is eternal. And we're not dead yet. Well, we're not dead yet, and we can boogie with the best of them. We are not dead yet, and we can laugh and have some fun, cause we're not dead yet. We're fighting for our freedom, and we'll never die, cause our spirit will live on. Come on, clap your hands. You can dance too if you want to. Are you ready? Woo! Because we're not dead yet. We, we can, can boogie with the best of them. We are not dead yet. We, we can, can laugh and have some fun. Because we're not dead, dead yet. yet. And we're, we're fighting for our freedom. And we'll never die. Because our spirit will live on. Well, the outcasts of the outcasts become the leaders of today. The ones we used to throw away to die are teaching us a better way. Well, and positive if you're HIV, you can understand the song. The last will be first, and the first will be last, and there's more than one way to be strong. Cause we're not, not dead, dead yet. yet. And we can, we can forget the, the best of them. them. We are not, not dead, dead yet. yet. And we can we laugh can and have some fun. Cause we're not, not dead, dead yet. yet. And we're fighting for our freedom, and we'll never die. When, okay, sorry, the words are too far away from me. I, no, well, all right. Okay, now you got to All right, well. All right, life is confusing, kids. Here, let me move it closer. Okay. Sometimes I forget the words to my own songs. <coughs> Gotta turn this off. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. Sorry, I should have made them bigger, but I didn't know how the setup was going to be, and that is the way it is. So I didn't promise this was going to be perfect because we're imperfect, right? But when you take away our services, we don't know how we'll survive since death is cost effective. Do you want us dead or alive? I wonder about that sometimes. I think they want us dead. When you take away the things we need, we don't know how we will cope. When you cut our means of security, you take away our hope. Okay, now we can do the chorus. Because we're not dead yet. And we can boogie with the best of them. We are not dead yet. We can laugh and have some fun Cause we're not dead yet We're fighting for our freedom And we'll never die Cause our spirit will turn on Well, if Medicaid does not aid us If Medicare does not care Millions of us will suffer 
How can you believe that's fair? If you want to cut back funding, stop the welfare for the rich. Billions bail out the billionaires while we're trapped down in a ditch. But we're not dead yet. And we can forget with the best of them. We are not dead yet. We can laugh and have some fun because we're not dead yet. <laughs> We're fighting for our freedom and will never die because our spirit will live on. Well, it's a battle cry for freedom through the healing power of love. It's the hope we get from our visions deep inside. Up above, it's the hope that comes from the struggle to be as brave as we can be. We are proud, we are humble, and the truth will set us free. Now we're gonna do it two times because I messed up my own song and it happens all the time. Are you ready? Clap those hands, dance around, let's do it, kids. Because you know what? We are not dead yet. And we can put it with the best of them. We are not dead yet. We can laugh and have some fun Cause we're not dead yet Fighting for our freedom And we'll never die Cause our spirit will live on One more time with gusto Cause we're not dead yet And we can forget with the best of them We are not dead yet We can laugh and have some fun Cause we're not Dead yet. We're fighting for our freedom and we'll never die because our spirit will live on. Woo. Ah. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> so let me explain some of what just happened there that was fun not okay <clears throat> because I am so delicate and I get so overheated so easily I have extra fans set up here well, I needed to move the words closer so that I could see them because, well, they needed to be bigger and I didn't have it planned well. So that's what happens. But in the meantime, I had a fan that was blowing on me. I brought it closer to me at one point tonight and the grill over the fan blades came off. So that's dangerous. This is not a good thing. One, one should be very careful about them. So when I was trying to pull the papers closer, of course, it got discombobulated by the fan. And, but it all worked out and we're fine. And we're not dead yet. <laughs> and nobody got hurt. Hey, can I have a swig of that? <laughs> yeah, honey, it's just, it's some real good stuff. You, I think you would enjoy it, actually. But then part of what happened also, see, lots of people know that I have physical disabilities because I use a wheelchair and I'm famous for the song we will ride and most people know me as being that woman that wild crazy woman in the big power chair and she's rowdy 
she's a lot of fun and she's real strong very confident it's well i put on a bit of a show because sometimes that's the only protection we really have isn't it and if we're not among friends and you're in enemy territory you need to broadcast that you're tough and strong so people don't mess with you and that you're confident before i was injured in 1977 i was already a songwriter and this next song that i want to share with you is a song from that period of time it was such a gift to me personally that these songs started coming and to be honest about it I probably well the way I like to say it is without the gift of writing these songs I might still be breathing but I wouldn't be alive a lot of people are like that there's a lot of people that are still breathing, but they're not really alive anymore. And the gift of these songs that I feel so compelled to share with people is what keeps lifting me up. So I'm gonna read, and by the way, I've never performed this publicly. And I decided to do this in one of i don't know how you do it but I, I, my body is I, is so unequal from the middle of the ribs down i have two different bodies one side is partially paralyzed and the other side doesn't have hot cold or pain and so all night long i'm doing the australian crawl one side and then the other side and then the other side you know and then you get up and go to the bathroom and whatever and so i'm in that kind of twilight period of consciousness quite often and quite often that's when things come to me this song is called coming from somewhere and i can say that this is a song that probably saved my life I will read what I wrote and then I'll sing it and you'll understand because it's the a kind of song that keeps evolving in its meaning personal meaning for me and yet I expect it'll probably have meaning for you too because we all have these internal spiritual quests there was a time in my early 20s when I was lost, out of control, in despair, hysterical, running around by myself at night in an area cleared of houses for a highway that was never built. No street lights in this dark, deserted few blocks in the city of Atlanta desolate desperate I remember crying screaming emotions exploding trying to expend the energy wondering if I would be destroyed in the process with part of me kind of hoping I would be just to get it all over with <laughs> I 
not exactly, yet somewhat suicidal. Totally exhausted, I collapsed into a deep sleep. Awoke to the sounds of birds with gentle, peaceful dawn light filtering through the branches and leaves, caressing my face. A glorious, spiritual awakening. The agonized panic of the night before was washed away by my tears. Amazed, I felt comforted by the firm, full feelings of love overflowing with hope and compassion. To make sure the message was clear and unforgettable, I was given a song. It was written in one sitting. As soon as I got back to where I was staying in those days, which was the Atlanta Lesbian Feminist Alliance, the Alpha House. The tune arrived with the words. No way to deny that it was a gift. All of these many years since then, this song and this experience has helped me to remember my spiritual connectedness. There have been times, many times, when this truth in my life was all I could find to keep me going. On Friday, September 26, 2014, I was riding in an accessible van on the way to Yale New Haven Hospital. <clears throat> the driver was someone I've known since the 1990s. I told him I was extra emotional because my partner, Katie Van Black, had a mild heart attack and I was worried. He remembered my partner, Patty Deep, who died on March 10th, 1999. Tears welled up in my eyes and a, flew, a few slipped out onto my cheeks. He couldn't see. I was still have a hard time crying. I'm getting better. Then and there, I remembered the third verse of my song coming from somewhere. And I recited them. There's a well of water deep inside, high upon the mountain of our dreams that catches every tear we've ever cried and pours them out again in a cooling stream. After a pause, he said, that's beautiful. Thankfully, that time, Katie recovered, returning home. And then Katie had a major stroke on May 9th, 2017, and she died at home under hospice care on May 14th, 2017. 
and this song coming from somewhere continues to evolve as spirits come and go. I'm going to start with verse 1. Oh, you need to see mine? Yeah, I can see it fine. Oh, okay. I thought I gave it to you, but oh well. Well, I'm looking for an open sky where I can see the messages above. Shining through the darkness of the lies that hide us from the truth of our love. Well, I know that I'm coming from somewhere, and I know I'll be going on soon. And this life on this planet is coming from the sun, from the spirit beyond the stars and the moon. I'm sitting beneath a living tree. And we're sitting on the trees of long ago, listening to the voices on the breeze, gently teaching lessons that we know. Don't you know? that you're coming from somewhere. Don't you know you'll be going? Yes, you'll be going soon. And this life on this planet is growing with the sun. With the spirit beyond the stars. Despite the difficulties that come with disability have inspired we are to live our lives full as HTTPS, video 443 million. There's a well of water deep inside, high upon the mountains of our dreams, that catches every tear we We've ever, 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 ever cried. And then pours them out again in a cooling stream. When we go, do you believe? We go somewhere. Well, I know we'll be going, so we will go soon. When all is said and done, will we rise to join the sun? Or will we go beyond the stars? We have spirit. Beyond the stars, beyond the moon. The colors of the universe are bright, glowing with the knowledge that they bring. Music is the chorus of the light teaching us 
teaching us this song of life we sing. Yes, I know that we're coming from somewhere. And I know that we're going, we're coming, we're going. We're all leaving soon. And our life on this planet, our light on this planet is coming from the sun, from our spirit deep inside, an ever-present guide, our spirit beyond the sun, when all is said and done, our spirit beyond the stars, deep, 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 Inside, far beyond the moon. Wow. I've been needing to sing that for a long time. So. That was fantastic. That was awesome. That was great. Yeah, I had a rough start, but I eased into it. It worked. You did just fine. You got through Thank it. You. you did it. Well, now I'm relieved because that was the one part that I was nervous about because it's so emotional for me. So, are you ready to sing again? Come on, kids. You ready? Come on. Give me some indication. Are you ready, Teddy? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Hey, Jessica. Jessica, oh. sorry. I, I think I muted you again. I think there's there was some sound coming through and... Um, Elaine had stopped. I'm sorry about that. Um, That's all right. Life is like that. Well, I, yeah, Jessica's got muted and she's trying to, she's trying to say something. So. Oh, okay. I don't know if we can get, if we can get you unmuted now on your end. Um, sorry about that. Okay. Hi, Jessica. Hi, I'm so sorry. I hit something and I didn't mean to, but, oh, crap. <laughs> but it, um, it started talking, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, then. And you would think such a serious, like, lovely song, and I'm like, oh, great. Okay, where's the, um. Yep, I was quick on the draw, and I muted you. Oh, I'm sorry about that. In the bag. They shouldn't put me in charge. Hard no problem. Yeah, move on. Okay. All right, this one is a good follow-up to the other song because it says, miracles happen. Miracles do happen. And to me, it's a miracle that I'm still here. I don't, you know, I don't understand it all, but all these things have happened. I've had so many very dramatic and traumatic things that have happened in my life, and I'm still here. It's a miracle. This particular song, Miracles Happen. If you think that you're in a situation and it's impossible, there's no way you're going to make it. Hold on to the possibility, even if it's unlikely. Maybe, just maybe, maybe it will work out. So often things do. We worry so much, and yet so often amazing things happen, miracles happen. 
Well, this song was inspired by a friend of mine whose situation was pretty awful. He w had many disabilities and had gotten severely depressed. He was living down in S Southwest Georgia, one of the most rural areas in the country. And well, anyway, he ended up injuring himself and being taken to the hospital and then, you know, whatever. So then they decided that his brother should be appointed as the guardian conservator. And my friend's name is Ed Chancy. Now, I'd been friends with Ed since the 1980s. We were in Atlanta, Georgia. We both went to Georgia State University. So I had seen all this happen and had watched things happen. And along with another friend, mutual friend named Linda Blair, we said, well, don't know if we can do this, but we're going to try. And we went down and we tried to talk to Ed and figure things out and connect him up with the uh, people, Georgia Advocacy Office that was with you the other day and other people, independent living centers, and this and that, and something else, and we tried to get things set up, but it was, wasn't was looking good. <laughs> it was, so, okay, now, the first verse and chorus was written at Ed Chancey's home in Blakely, Georgia, and this was Okay, I messed up and didn't get the date on this. Oh, you got it here. Oh, you got a big copy. That's the better copy. Yeah. <laughs> big copy. Yeah, that's what I meant to do was to blow up a bunch of them and stuff, but oh well. We do the best we can, right? That, that's the last song for today is doing the best we can, by the way. But this one is Miracles Happen. So now this was written October 20th through 23rd, 2015 and dedicated to Ed Chancy. And by the way, he did manage, I was in the medical van with him and he moved from Blakely, Georgia up to Massachusetts, in the Boston area. So he did get his freedom, he did get away. But when I wrote this song, it didn't look good. But I, again, this came to me. And uh, the chorus, you know, call and response. I know some of you know call and response. That's where the I sing it and then you sing it after me again. We, we tried this before, only this is a real one. So um, I'll say give all that you have and you say give all. Anyway, I'll feed it to you. Just follow the line. I'll point to myself, then I'll point to you, okay? Let's try it. I actually have sung this song with a, a, a theatrical group of uh, people with developmental disabilities, and we had a blast. I will dig out the, um, um, uh, and, uh, I can send an email and we put it online. You can see me performing this with uh, Play With Grace. It's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Yay, <laughs> okay. Fail, fail again, fail better. Make sure you try, try again. Make sure you're never a quitter. Don't turn your back on a friend. There's always a chance you can make it, or at least make it better somehow. Just open your heart, be brave, do your part. There's no better time than right now. So I'm going to feed you this. Give all that you can. Give all that you can. Be the best that you can. Be the best that you can. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Reach out your hand. Reach out your hand. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Forgive yourself too. Forgive yourself to try to love everyone. Try to love everyone. Just don't forget you. Don't 
forget you. We're going to do the chorus again because it's good and you've almost got it. Give all that you have, give all that you have, be the best that you can, be the best that you can. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, reach out your hand, reach out your hand. We all make mistakes, we all make mistakes, forgive yourself too, forgive yourself too, try to love everyone. Try to love everyone, just don't forget you. Don't forget you. Try, try again, try softer. Sometimes a light touch is best. Don't just push till you crash or collapse. Chill out. Give it a rest. It is what it is, try to face it. So little is in our control. Miracles happen when we open the heart, the body, the mind, and the soul. Give all that you have. Give all that you have. Be the best that you can. Be the best that you can. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Reach out your hand. Reach out your hand. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Forgive yourself too. Forgive yourself too. Try to love everyone. Try to love everyone. Just don't forget you. Just don't forget you. One more time. Are you ready? Give all that you have. Give all that you have. Be the best that you can. Be the best that you can. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For reach out your hand. Reach your hand. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Forgive yourself too. Forgive yourself too. Try to love everyone. Try to love everyone. Just don't forget you. Just don't forget you. Because you got to love yourself. Got to love yourself. And boy, do I know that's a hard one. You know? It's a hard one for a lot of us. You know, a lot of us, like we can love almost everybody else in the world, even our enemies, before we love ourselves. We have a hard time with that, don't we? And yet, that's really essential. We've got to do it. We've got to be our own best friend. And I'm thankful. Next month, I will hopefully turn 71. And after all these years, huh, I'm actually kind of being nicer to myself. I'm actually factoring in my own survival. What a concept. Anyway. It's this move, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, does somebody else want to say something for a while? I got to take a little break. You know, I was a baby radical back then, but I went to Cuba in 1970. Oh, my. Mm. Mm. Well, so we're into a uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, pandemics happen. You know, we said miracles happen. Well, pandemics happen, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read a, a, a couple of poems. And uh, we're going to do one final song. I'm fading a little bit. So I think that's about all I got left in me. But I want to say special thank you to everybody who has participated. Because I feel such a wonderful connection with you, even though some of us have never even met in person. Or if we did, it's been years. Like Susan and I haven't seen each other in years. Decades. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And this whole, see, I, um, I hesitated. <laughs> 
actually, I dug in my heels and said, I don't want to go there with some of this new technology. And, but when the pandemic hit, it was like, well, all right, Elaine, you're going to have to stick your big toe in the 21st century. And that's when I got the webcam. And because everything's online on the, you know, Zooming and all this other stuff and whatever. So <clears throat> this has been such a powerful, inspirational time for me. I've been writing a lot. I don't have the energy to share a lot of the songs that I haven't even got some of them finished yet. But I've written a lot over the last few months. This was... one of the first and it was written on March 13th 2020 that's when things around here shut down because I was supposed to go to a rehearsal that was going to be held at a public library and the rehearsal was canceled because the library closed and that was that and everything had to go like this so the first poem that came out is this one, and it's very simple, and it's called Pandemics Happen. Plague and pandemic, flood and drought, blizzard and hurricane tend to even out. No way to control there are things we can do. Please try to help me and I'll try to help you. And here's another one. This one is called Pause. This was written on March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Everything was closed. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Or some places had St. Patrick's things anyway, but a lot of places were closing. The universe has pushed the restart button. Putting people on pause on Earth. Cities and nations are in hibernation pondering what life is worth. Shelter in place is the mantra, while millions have no home at all. There may be a message in all of this mess, this pause is a wake-up call. And then this one is called Pondering Zoom and Skype. I was brand new. I was nervous about it. This was written April 8th through 10th. On the night of Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, I attended and participated in two get-togethers online. The first was a small local Zoom meeting. Next, I experienced my first Skype connection with a friend <laughs> in Singapore. Wow. Having a webcam is still very new for me. Two events in a row blew my mind, sharing my emotions, prompting a kaleidoscope of complex memories. The following poems emerged. With some editing, they were completed on April 10th. Intimacy, 
without proximity brings infinite possibilities. The joy of new discoveries vibrating with ancient truth. Mystical, magical miracles coming and going like breath. Cycles and spirals of life and death propelled by the spirit of youth. With you, away from you, we are each and both together and alone, unique yet universal. My light and song, your light and song, joining at times to become more than we could ever be separately, generating a glow, illuminating deep and far into places usually hidden by fear or long festering shame. Your song, mine, ours, tuned in, turned on, fabulous frequencies. There are things I know, we know, with no way to explain how or why. Not logical or realistic. Yet in the ethereal realms of life, of breath, and love and hope, I rise, you rise, we rise, amazed and amazing. Wow. How wonderful. No way to explain. Yet it is plain. You and I are we and we are one. Yay. Okay, now we got one more song to do because that's all I got in me for tonight. But I saved this one because I wanted a yeehaw tail end song. Okay, now <clears throat> what I would like you to do right now is to just unmute for a minute so we can practice. Because one of the things, I'll go ahead, unmute if you can. Now, it's going to sound really funny. But I want you to understand that my mother and father met at a square dance in Binghamton, New York. And so I grew up with country music. That was in upstate New York, but it was country music. And then I lived in Atlanta, Georgia for 17 years. So I got a lot of country in me. When I was growing up, Hee Haw was a standard on our television set. So with this song, the chorus goes, I just want you to know you can be yourself with me. I like you just the way you are, mm -hmm. unconditionally. <clears throat> and I don't expect perfection. So I hope you'll understand while we both will make some big mistakes, we're doing the best we can. So now when we do the chorus, 
I just want you to know you can be yourself with me. I like you just the way you are unconditionally. And I don't expect perfection. So I hope you'll understand while we both will make some big mistakes, we're going to go Ooh, and we're going to have to do eha. Yeah. Okay, let's practice the ehas. Are you ready? One, two, three. Eha. It doesn't matter if ehas are not exactly the same because it's the spirit of it, okay? So the rest of it and stuff, you know, you know, we wouldn't be able to sing it. But let's practice the ehas and then you can we will mute again and then you can sing an uh, an eha to the, your heart's content, okay? One more time. Eha, you ready? Eha. One more time. Eha. Didn't that feel good? Yeah. Okay, all right, mute again. We're going to sing this song. Do you have this one bigger? No. Okay, I'll take it. I know this pretty well, but... I know you do. But I'm also tired, and I get spacey. Yeah. Oh, this is well here. I don't need this to be here anymore. I can move this over here. Yay. Okay. Yes. Yay. Okay. Now we're going to do the chorus, and you can practice the ehas. Even if you don't get much of the rest of it, I want to make sure that you do the ehas and sing along or dance along or just be silly because. Mm -hmm. Bum 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 now, right? Are you ready? Well, I just want you to know you can be yourself with me. I like you just the way you are unconditionally. But well, I don't expect perfection, so I hope you'll understand. While the both will make some big mistakes, we're just with. Lots of people try to live in a fantasy And they have their own ideas How they think you ought to be Well, they don't know much about giving But they sure know how to take Ha, ah, you know those Well, if you'd like to try some sharing Let's be friends for heaven's sake Come on, sing with me now Well, I just want you to know You can be yourself with me I like you just the way you are unconditionally. Oh, well, I don't expect perfection, so I hope you'll understand. While we both will make some big mistakes, we're doing. Ooh, I screwed up my own song. Yeehaw! Come on, yeehaw, do it. You can do it. Are you ready? Yeehaw! Doing the best we can. See, it's okay if we screw up. It's all right because we're doing the best we can, right? Ah! Well, to be honest, I can't promise that I always will be fair. Or that when you think you need me, that I always will be there. And I know that you can't give me everything I may desire. But we'll share our music in the universal choir. Come on, sing over now. Well, I just want you to know you can be yourself with me. I like you just the way you are unconditionally. And I don't expect perfection, so I hope you'll understand. While we both will make some big mistakes, we're doing. Doing the best we can. Well, there are times.
times I feel so desperate that I don't know where to turn. But at the end of my rope, I tied a knot and eventually we learn. If we simply just hang in there and do our best with love, then the answers come within us all around us. And from above. I just want you to know you can be yourself to me. I like you just the way you are unconditionally. Well, I don't expect perfection, so I hope you'll understand. While we both will make big mistakes, we're doing. Yeehaw! Doing the best we can. Okay, here we are, final chorus. One more time, let's do it together. Well, I just want you to know you can be yourself with me. I like you just the way you are unconditionally. Well, I don't expect perfection, so I hope you'll understand. While both will make big mistakes we're doing. Best you can and never give up. Amen. Woo! Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Thanks, Elaine. Oh, that was fun. Thank you. Thanks that was so a lot much. of fun. Okay. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> Well, everyone that showed up is very, very special to me because this is a beginning. For me, this is a really major beginning in my life. It looks like it's time for me to make this apartment into a, a broadcast and recording studio. And uh, so we'll continue to do this. And there's so much, so much that we can do together. So, so keep your spirits up and reach out. Get whatever help you need. But deep down inside yourself, find that courage and that hope. Miracles do happen. Never give up. Woo! Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. Take a rest. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I, I couldn't have done it without y'all. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. You, okay, you, so I want to come to Michigan, so just keep that in mind. Once we get to move, I want to come. <laughs> You're more than welcome. All righty then. So I want to remind you guys of a few things. Tomorrow, Intelligent Lives, 2 o'clock. The film will be shown, and then afterwards, Micah Feldman, who is in the film, and his parents and sister will do a talk back. Um, okay. the, so the, the first will be the film, and if you've seen the film before, you may not want to sit and see it again, but you want to join in about an hour, so about, about three o'clock, and then you could do the talk back. On Monday, if you're a lover of music, uh, there's going to be Anthony Tussler, who is a music historian and a disability activist. And he's going to be playing music that portrays the lives of people with disabilities. And he's going to talk about whether that portrayal is accurate or inaccurate, and whether that was created by a person with a disability or not a person with a disability. And one of his favorite things to talk about, just to give you a clue, is the opera Porgy and Bess. Oh. Yes. And then Tuesday, uh, we will have an art class, which should be really, should be a lot of fun. So if you guys are into something interactive, um, Daniel Cascardo, who is a muralist, he does huge, big, fanciful murals. Wow lots of colors. So what he's going to do is he's going to talk about his art, but he has also taken a big piece 
and he's cut it into small pieces. And if you sign up to do this in advance and you do it by Monday early afternoon, then we will send you a little piece of the big mural and you get to color in or paint or glue or do whatever you want to do to your little piece. Then take a picture of it, send it back. And then what Daniel's going to do, he's going to put them all together and then he will do little embellishments in between them. So it all becomes a cohesive piece of art. And you'll see that a week later because it'll take him some time to do that preparation. So Tuesday is the creation of the art. And then a week later will be the big reveal of what has happened. And then Wednesday, we're having uh, a workshop on Title I of the ADA, which is related to employment. Thursday is Parents' Day. We're having two people, at, well, actually it's four people talk about being a parent. In the morning is Mariah Nichols, who is an amazing woman, who is deaf and a disability advocate. And she's the parent of three children, one of which is autistic, the other one has Down syndrome, and the other one, at least at this point in time, seems to be a typical ordinary kid. And so she's gonna talk about how you raise children with disabilities to be proud of who they are. And the stuff that she's gonna be talking about is good for actually anybody to be proud of who they are. It's not really only for kids. And then in the evening, we will have uh, Richard Scotch, Allison Carey, and Pamela Block. Uh, they've just written, written a book about how parents can be allies or they can be obstacles to their children succeeding in life. And they're gonna, they've done some research about what the differences are between wh why some parents are allies and some are not. And uh, they've done interviews of adults with disabilities looking back on their childhood and they've looked at parents of ch children that are now adults. And then, let's see, Friday, what are we doing Friday? I'm blanking. That's okay, so you can't, you human being. Oh, I can too. I can do everything. Service animals. <laughs> I have a cheat sheet, so I can do it all. So service animals is going to be on Friday, and that's going to be Amy Mays, who's with uh, a local center for independent living. And she's not going to, she's going to talk not only about service animals, but about all these other kinds of animals that come into our lives that people try to squeak by and say they're service animals. So that you'll know what the difference is between a service animal and these other animals. And somebody's walking around with their, their, their chihuahua in their purse. What do you say when they say that that's their service dog? Because chihuahuas and purses do not qualify as service dogs. And then we will have more music next Saturday. We will have a virtual dance. And I hope you all come back. It'll be slightly different than this uh, because it will have a DJ. And she is a young woman who has cerebral palsy. And so she is gonna be uh, bringing us music for us to dance to or listen to or watch others dance if you don't wanna actually dance. And if you've never been to a virtual dance before, they are a lot of fun. So you don't have to be a dancer because if you wanna do it with your video off, you can dance your heart off and nobody gets to see, or you can dance so we can all watch and we can cheer you on. And that's what's coming up this week. So I hope I see some of you guys. I know I'll see Laura and I know I'll see Nick. <laughs> And Elaine, you've been a constant lately, so I'm probably going to see you. Mm -hmm. Do 